Hello everyone and welcome to Initial Experiments in Vertical Takeoff and Landing Aircraft Design in Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. And so here we have a first prototype. I haven't named it yet. It's sort of inspired by an Osprey except we're replacing the rotors with jets. Actually I wanted four jets on the tailplane, the horizontal stabilizer in the back. It used to be bigger and it had jets on it as well so there were a total of four. And it could go much faster than this version does. But the problem with that version was landing. In particular, it could take off well enough as long as we set the engines in the back right. It was 23% was what I had to set them to. But on landing, there was a lot of yaw problems because after all, there isn't a lot of air going across the control surfaces, the aerodynamic control surfaces, especially on the vertical stabilizers. So without thrust vectoring control on the engines, which we don't have with these engines, uh, it just really couldn't control yaw. This two-engine version is a little bit better at that, but even so, it still looked a little bit iffy on takeoff, you'd notice. Now, with that odd little runway ramp that I've got there, you know, the gap between the runway and the ground, that's really awkward, so I decided to open up Kerbal Constructs and see if I could delete the extra runways. I have four runways in total, and I decided that maybe I'd just go for two for this rendition of John F. Kennedy International Airport. Um, it, it just hopefully will look better. I mean, it'll definitely look better. And I only really need two runways anyway. We aren't doing anything multiplayer here. So, yeah. I just deleted the extra stuff and the two runways I left there at least look proper. So we're taking off from New York here. And my goal is to set up a new airport in Detroit, Detroit Metro. But of course the hypersonic liner would be overkill for that. By the time we got up to speed, we'd have to slow down again. So. I opted for a slower sort of experiment, and that's what this is. Uh, this basically has barely enough fuel to get there because it uses so much fuel just on taking off vertically. You can see it took out quite a chunk of our kerosene there to uh, do the vertical takeoff. Uh, altogether, it gets past Mach 1, but not really past the transonic region. So this is basically airliner style. With the extra two engines on the tail, it could easily get to Mach 2 or more but uh, it can't get past the transonic region here and of course the wing is not very well conditioned for that it's more conditioned for heavy lift and be able to lift a lot more if we weren't trying to vert vertically take off with it and so I just keep it to more airliner speeds and here we are headed over Lake Erie and approaching Detroit the passenger cabin on this is for 24 passengers so it can carry 24 passengers at a range between New York and Detroit with vertical takeoff and landing hopefully but actually the fuel margin looks a bit tight here and uh, the cost per passenger I calculated out based on four dollars per gallon for jet fuel is uh, 135 dollars so that's where we're at there and it was a 50 minute flight into Detroit and we are attempting a landing but just killing off speed with this took a while you can see I've got the engines tilted down and really maybe I should have just shut them off because we're going to run out of fuel and I needed to spend a lot of time uh, circling above the airport uh, of course we have that airport texture it's not really exactly where the airport's supposed to be but it's close enough that I decided to use it but it's still the terrain so we have to put proper runways there anyway I spent so much time circling around that I killed all my kerosene, my fuel, without uh, really paying attention to that. I should have paid more attention. At low altitudes, the fuel really runs out very quickly, and especially when you're in vertical takeoff and landing mode. Here I'm trying to be fancy, but uh, in the midst of this, the fuel is going to cut out. But you can see it's uh, reasonably well controlled, at least. Uh, with the four engine version, it'd be yawing all over the place at this velocity. It just didn't have much stability, and that's why I didn't go with that. So honestly, I haven't done much with vertical takeoff and landing aircraft in Kerbal Space Program in a long time, and I don't think I ever bothered to do it in Realism Overhaul. So that was only in the stocking that I had a VTOL aircraft. So well, there's there goes our fuel. Um, so yeah, this is the first foray into this. If you can imagine, after thousands upon thousands of hours in this game, there's uh, I'm just starting out making a VTOL aircraft in Realism Overhaul and we're gonna find out how it works out. Uh, this 
When you think about it, there's not too much reason, especially once we lay down the runways, to have vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. There's not exactly a whole lot in our way. It's not like that we have to land in places with bunches of trees, uh, but it is sort of an interesting thing to try out. And okay, uh, I did forget to mention that the engines are on Rotatrons from Inferno Robotics, and they work much better than I thought they would. And this is why we need runways. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, I, I thought we were going to land safely there. It didn't look too bad. And then terrain issues happened. Maybe we were landing too hard, but still, I, I, think, uh, I think I was making a good case for a safe landing there. Yeah. But anyway, we can still build the airport, by the way. Even if your uh, craft has crashed, you can still lay down the runways. And I do, so... We have uh, constructed Detroit Metro Airport with two runways at uh, roughly the proper location. And so, as far as my Kerbal Constructs go goals are concerned, it's going well. But I had a second design plan, not using Inferno Robotics hinges, but instead using uh, F-35 style engine configuration from Quiz Tech Aero. And it's actually configured by Advanced Jet Engines, oddly enough with... Uh, with reaction wheels, even though that's not common in Realism Overhaul. But uh, I guess that's required to make it work out. Uh, you'll note the interesting wing configuration on this particular jet, and that is because I couldn't figure out how to get the center of mass over the center of thrust any other way. Um, the center of thrust was too far back and the center of mass too far forward, so I had to move the wings back and actually make the wings much heavier than they ought to be. Uh, they have a mass strength uh, of 2, which is really bad, actually. Even space planes have it uh, set to 1 in Realism Overhaul. So these are double the mass of a space plane wing, just to get the center of mass far enough back to make this work. And I don't know why that is. Uh, okay, here we are switching modes here. And there we go. Uh, it does have the lift fan in front, and that does have an effect on the thrust, but yeah, I, I just couldn't figure out any other way to get everything balanced properly. And well, at least I got it balanced properly, but it's very inefficient. And so this doesn't have much range. We take, we're take we taking off from Edwards Air Force Base there. I had placed that earlier, and I was aiming to place an airport in the San Francisco Bay Area, but I ran out of fuel. So we'll find out how this glides. So this is a completely different sort of way of making a VTOL. This uh, had parts that animate and obviously direct their thrust downward. The flaw with this is that unlike the Infernal Robotics version, you can't uh, place the engine midway between down and up. The Infernal Robotics parts let me do it at 45 degrees, 60 degrees, all that, anywhere in between. Here, it's either down or up, and that's it. So... That's not so convenient when you think about it, especially when you're trying to transition between one mode and another, but it still managed it. But without fuel and with the awkward wing configuration, this was really tough to land, and I didn't uh, maintain enough speed to land this properly, and so it was a hard landing, and yeah, things did not go well. Good thing that this is all sandbox and mainly I'm just trying to build airports all over the place. And we got close enough to the San Francisco Bay for me to place an airport at Moffett Field, which will suffice. And so here I am placing my little airport at Moffett Field, which is in the South Bay. I initially intended to make uh, SFO, San Francisco International, but we didn't quite get that far. So anyway, I'm using this little uh, place where the ground texture matches that of an airport and uh, well first forays into vertical takeoff and landing systems there'll be many more where that came from but we really need them to go faster and be more efficient I don't think the F-35 configuration is going to work for that uh, so we'll try something different alright so on that note thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time